You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. We are joined today by um, folks from the Teachers for Tomorrow program, Miss, Mrs. Chelsea Berg from Dow High School. One of her students, Lauren Van Sumeren, also, she is, you are a senior from uh, Dow High School. Like I'm letting you know that you're a senior. She already knows she's a senior. <laughs> Miss Tracy, Speaker Gersteimer, uh, she's here at the admin building, but she's in charge of a lot of things here uh, involving curriculum. Ava Good, who is a junior over at Midland High School, and this this is Katie Sturds, who is a teacher over at Midland High School. So Katie and Chelsea are both kind of heading up the the Teachers for Tomorrow program, and we're going to learn a little bit about that today. So, Mrs. Berg, can you tell us a little bit about the program? Yeah, so we're really excited to bring this opportunity to students at Midland Public Schools. We have so many other career-oriented programs, but there's always been sort of a need for education, but a lot of students who are inter interested in it. We see a lot of that when we do the different career surveys that they take throughout the years. Um, and so we've been really lucky to get a grant, which we'll talk more about later, that is giving us an opportunity to eventually make this a class. But right now we're soft rolling it out as a club. Um, we've been meeting since the spring uh, with teams from both high schools, but then also the elementary schools, because we will need their partnership uh, to create places for us to send these students who want classroom experience. Uh, so we've been talking about different ideas and what we can do for the club setting to begin with. We uh, have teams within our own high schools of other teachers that are also interested um, in being involved. So it's not just coming from one person, but we also really want to focus on how education is more than just a teacher, that there's a lot of other careers in the field that people could go into also. So we want to make sure that we're being diverse in that sense. Cool. So this is the this is year one of it, right? Yes, we have maybe like year point five if you count <laughs> the planning from last year. <clears throat> How long did it take to, to start planning? Uh, well, I wasn't initially involved. I went to a conference with Tracy, and she started talking about it, and I was like, I need to be involved in this. Uh, and so then I sort of picked it up in March, but I know that work has been going on as far as the grants since well before then. Okay, all right. Uh, Mrs. Stearns. What? I know. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> How does this differ from, uh, from like, the traditional recruiting that we usually do to try to get, yeah. get um, teachers? I think a lot of the opportunities that kids have at the high school level, uh, the co-op opportunities are, are wonderful. We have two great co-op programs at both high schools. But like Chelsea alluded to, there's kind of this gap with education, right? Um, and, you know, I think having a club – early on because we can't let kids necessarily go co-op and you know go teach as, as seniors in high school um, but if there can be a club and partnerships with our middle school and, and elementary schools to get their kind of feet in the water a little bit and, and exposed um, even though the opportunity to actually teach and work in the field as a co-op is not there yet I think this club and that connection with um, our other schools uh, either shadowing or um, you know helping you know, or, or even just um, being mentored or partnered up with another teacher is going to be really cool. As far as like recruiting teachers, when you go out and you are trying to get people to come to Midland Public Schools, they've gone through all of the, all of the process. If we can get kids early interested um, and kind of get their feet wet again into it in the beginning, that recruiting process is going to be really easy because they've been a part of it even in high school. Um, sometimes, you know, you get into a pro program in college and you're like, oh gosh, I'm three years in and I'm not sure if this is really what I want to do. Hopefully with this club and class, kids are, are well decided by the time they choose their college. Even though, you know, we change our minds and there's lots of avenue, I think that this is um, just going to be a neat opportunity, additional opportunity for high school students to try to, to explore a, a job that that they can't co-op in, but they can certainly be a part of in, in some some way. Absolutely. I think that's probably a good segue because we the program is called Teachers for Tomorrow, but not everybody's going to be a teacher. They're going to be, they might be in the education field. Mm -hmm. So Ava, what are, you, what are you going to do after school? I want to be a speech language pathologist. Okay. So our, what led you to that? What, what made you want to do that? Um, I really originally wanted to be a teacher, 
but I kind of just like thought about it and I work at a daycare so I got to experience kids from like ages 10 and under and I got to look at them grow and I've seen them with their speaking and how they've evolved from barely talking at all to being able to like tell you how their day was <laughs> and I thought that was really cool and I wanted to really try and just be a part of that and help. That's awesome. How long have you been working at a daycare for? I have been working there since I was 14, so two years now. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's awesome. That's really good experience. That's, that's awesome. What about you, Lauren? Um, I'm very interested in going to special education, so I very much do want to be a teacher, and I have always wanted to be a teacher. Um, the age range that I really enjoy is zero to five, and so I'm excited to go into early preschool and early childhood education. That's the most fun age, zero to five. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're all fun, yeah. Well, some days it depends, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, what are some of your extracurricular activities? Hey, Ava, what do, you, what do you do besides working and going to school? Um, I do babysit once in a while, so any parents from the daycare who I know like personally or I've like, frequently met them, I'll usually give them my number or I'll get a neighbor's number and then they'll contact me and ask me if I want to babysit their kids. And I also do um, Taekwondo. Nice. I've right. been taking a lot of on and off years, but <laughs> I've consistently been probably staying in it now since third grade. Holy cow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. What about you, Lauren? Um, I'm involved in student leadership at Dow High. Okay. And so there's a lot of extra volunteering that we do and at the moment we are focusing on homecoming so things like planning the assemblies and making sure that the parade happens and then I'm also in basketball at Dow High and I'm actually coaching the Jefferson girls basketball oh. team right now Jeez. so that's fun that's watching them grow and evolve. How do you even have time to be here right now? <laughs> <laughs> Right. I specifically asked her which days she didn't yeah. have to do right. something. Right, <laughs> right. Well, we kind of mentioned before we were we started recording. You're kind of hanging out with with Mrs. Berg pretty much all day, right? I am. I'm with her a lot. I love it. I even subbed for her sixth hour today, so that was a whole other hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, Tracy, can you tell me a little bit about the funding for the program? Yeah, uh, the state of Michigan has uh, launched all these initiatives to uh, get individuals interested in the career of education, um, whether they be paraprofessionals um, or students like yourselves. So last year at about this time, uh, myself and a colleague were tasked to investigate this option that was announced through the state. We went and visited a, another school at their program that they launched and we wrote the grant and submitted it to MDE. It was approved in maybe January or February of last year. And then we assembled a, a team of people to start uh, getting ready to launch it, market the program, review the curriculum, and we're working through those pieces and we will reapply for the grant as well, again, because it's renewable every year. Okay, what, what would their day look like being involved in this program? The teachers or the students? The st well, <laughs> I guess the students, let's start with the students. What would mm. their day look like? So for the course, we are envisioning that the course would need to be at the end of the day, a sixth period, so that they can do those opportunities that Mrs. Stearns and Mrs. Berg already mentioned where you would partner with a middle school or an elementary school. Since those buildings uh, have school, have students exiting later, it'll make it possible if our class is at the end of the day. So we imagine that students would go to the class, we would be building what is appropriate behavior, how do you build relationships with students, getting you ready to go out into the field. In order for us to do some of the articulated credit that we're hoping to do with our college partners, you have to do a certain amount of hours out in the field. So once we feel like you're ready to be in that professional setting, you'll be matched with a partner or partners. Maybe we would consider having you do some time in elementary and some time in secondary, just so you see 
you know, both sides of the field, right? Kind All the elements. Kind of like the mentoring program that yeah. we already have here, right? Yep. So they get to go and spend hours, not in class, but actually going out into the field and being a teacher, being involved in what's happening in the class. That is the best way to figure out if you want to do something or not, is yeah. to just try it, right? That is so cool. So the, essentially job shadowing teachers or a speech pathologist. So Or whatever field right. they're interested in. If they wanted to be a counselor, if they sure. wanted to... Yeah you know, admin, we can do that too within the grant. So really that course is introducing them to all the different pathways, and there are many. There are social workers. I mean, we have all kinds of oh, different yeah. folks within the field. That is that is really, really cool. So, Chelsea, you you had a uh, – Miss Berg, I'm sorry. <laughs> Miss Berg, you had a, a, a class or, or a program that was kind of like this when you were going to school. Can you talk about that a little bit? So that was one of the main reasons I was so excited to hear about this because I took this class. Um, I went to Freeland High School, um, and when I was a senior, my sixth and seventh hour of my day was this class. We called it Teacher Cadet, which is kind of a weird <laughs> name. Um, but we had placements in our classrooms in the other schools in the district. We would spend time in the classroom with our teacher as well, usually like once a week. Um, and at that time, I, I knew I wanted to be in secondary, but it's obviously a little awkward to pair high school students <laughs> with their peers to be their teacher. Um, and so I was in a fifth grade classroom, but I did that because that was the history I really liked. So if I was going to teach something to little kids, I at least wanted to like it. Um, <laughs> and so then I would go there um, and it was just really good experience. Even if it wasn't the age I wanted, it still confirmed. Like I always knew that was what I wanted to do. I joke that when I realized being a princess ballerina wasn't a feasible <laughs> life goal, I was like, I should just be a teacher. It's, it's, it's a big jump, close. but I don't pretty know. close it's to pretty the same. Close, yeah. And so it just, for me, it reaffirmed that that was what I wanted to do. But I also had classmates who took the class and were like, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. And so that saved them three or four years of college to get to field work in college to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. I need to start over. And so even though for me it was just giving me a useful hour out of my day was something I wanted to do. For other people, it definitely gave them the chance to see that maybe it wasn't for them, but in a, a much lower risk environment than when you're paying for college credits. Um, and then I ended up really having a good bond with my host teacher at that time. When I was in college, I would go volunteer in her classroom on Fridays. Um, and so that happened for years. So that one class gave me so much extra classroom experience that I wouldn't have gotten without it. It's kind of funny. You see when you're growing up or when you're going to school, you see um, other classmates and you kind of realize that's a natural born teacher or she, she's going to be a teacher. She's born to be a teacher, I think. Mrs. Stearns, that was kind of, <laughs> that was kind of your wheelhouse. Yes, me. for sure. That's it's. Although a princess does sound yes. good. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, teaching was always uh, definitely my path. But I think what's cool about this opportunity, even listening to Ava, maybe not a teacher, but speech path and and um, piggybacking on what Miss um, Berg said, get kids into this class who are maybe on the fence, like, well, I don't know, or whatever. And either they will be like, okay, yes, this is it. Or well, maybe not. Or um, we had some kids at our first meeting say, you know, I definitely want secondary, but who knows? Maybe when we do go to the elementary and they, they get a little taste of those third grader, you know, reading to the third graders or whatever, that, that could open up different avenues. And I think that that's really uh, what this cl club and class is going to really, I hope, expose kids to different, um, different opportunities within education. And also to view because they see teachers all day, you guys see us all day, right, through the lens of a student, but being able to step back and see watching the teacher not just present the material, but all of the things that the teacher or the speech path or the psychologist or the social worker, I'm sorry, counselor, um, administrator, what goes into that day, not to scare them off, but like this is just an incredible job that you are, um, that it is really a privilege to be a part of, or maybe, oh, yep, that's not what I want to do. And before they, they go to that university and declare education as their major, they, they've had a, had a feel for that. So um, I think it's going to 
whether you're on the fence or whether you're for sure, I think this is going to be great. And it'll just solidify like it did with Ms. Berg that that's what you want to do. And who knows, we may get a teacher out of Ava yet, although a speech path in a lot of ways is a teacher, is an educator in so many ways. Maybe not, we don't see it as the traditional sense, but for sure. So I'm excited. I'm excited for kids to, you know, get the job shadowing, ask the hard questions and be able to have those conversations with kids. Well, it's an awesome idea because like you said, Mrs. Stearns, you don't, students really don't get to see all the behind the scenes stuff that that you guys do and all the things that all the work that you put into it afterwards or the camaraderie i think even behind closed doors between you and your your neighbors or Mm -hmm. um just other teachers in in the same department you know so uh tracy you you were kind of talking about something before we started recording um I forgot you, you <laughs> because we've been having a pretty, pretty solid conversation. Um, we know that we have Midland Public School students who are interested in the field of education. We've looked at data in both high schools. Historically, we have had a career in tech program as part of our consortium model where our students can travel to Bullet Creek and participate in their program. However, like you mentioned, that has become for some students a barrier. They either don't drive, um, they can't get there in the morning at that time of day, it's a schedule conflict. And so this class will help resolve some of those opportunities, right? We're gonna create an opportunity for our own students to explore the field where they don't have to travel outside of the district to do so. Mm -hmm. That's a great, yeah, great point for sure. Uh, Ava, did you have any questions when when maybe approached by the when approached or or um, when the program was kind of brought to you what were your initial questions about the program or thoughts about it I actually didn't have any questions about it the moment my counselor told me about it I'm like okay put that down I want that one and and then I got like really disappointed when I heard it wasn't really a class (laughs) but then I got excited again when I got told it was a club and so I was just really thinking about like what I would be able to do and how much I'd be able to get done and experience. That's good. What about you, Lauren? Did you have any questions or, or kind of concerns? That this is important too because for fellow students that might have some sort of question, it might be a good idea to kind of bring that up now so it could address that. Did you have any questions or? Um, I think my big question was how soon can we get into the classroom <laughs> <laughs> um, because. I'm like very excited to be able to go in and interact with kids one on one and really be able to like confirm that this is what I want to do with my life. She didn't really have to seek the information. I was just, hey, Lauren, I'm going to have this new club and you're going to be my president. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was like, now I'll tell you about it. (laughs) Was it something you saw in her or you just knew? Well, I knew she wanted to be a teacher and like. We do pen pals in student leadership, and she's, like, usually the only person that actually enjoys going to play with the second graders. <laughs> uh, everybody else is like, oh, do we have to go see them again? Uh, so it's, I mean, I did see it, but I also knew it, and I knew that she was also the good person to help me get this out to, yeah. to the masses at school. I was super excited, too, when we first got the announcement and, and we showed the Teachers of Tomorrow video um, to the students to the student body and then the response on the survey, like it was, I knew, I knew they were out there, right? I knew those students were out there. Um, And kids were like, oh, I can't make the club because maybe it's their sport or whatever. I'm like, it's okay, do what you can. This club is meant to get you in as often as you can. And next year there's a class and their eyes just light up like, what a cool opportunity that they never would have thought of. And and I, I, th- I think another colleague said, well, you have Ava Good, so she's an in for you because she'll be, you know, it's kind of the same thing, even though maybe a different uh, path. But, I, yeah, I think we're tapping into an untapped resource. And, uh, and um, we have great staff from, you know, our pre-K all the way up to the high school that – want to share their knowledge and share their classroom and I think it's just going to be really great and the kids are excited. Well I feel like it's a, it's an overlooked field like we've talked about with the CTE programs you know and the mm-hmm. trades. It, teaching is something we just kind of overlook and and forget like we're going to need teachers yeah. you know forever. We're going to need people in the trades forever so you know. Yeah. 
Tracy, was there anything else you wanted to add that I? Uh, added sometimes to uh, teachers aren't necessarily marketers of their field, right? Uh, and right. this is, um, you know, a, a concentrated effort to do that because students only see, you know, the tip of the iceberg. There's all this behind the scenes planning and preparation and grading that they're doing to deliver a really awesome 50 minute ex or 55 minute experience, uh -huh. yeah. right? <laughs> right, and all the student sees is that and the content, right, at the right. secondary level. Um, teachers aren't necessarily talking about, I love my job, right. I like my colleagues, mm -hmm. you know, I feel fulfilled doing this because students write me letters or emails you know 10 years after they graduate all of those things that we know are there about our field um, this is an also an effort just to market our field as a good place to be mm -hmm. absolutely well thank you all for being here today i really appreciate it that's our show uh, we'd like to thank all our listeners around the district around the country and around the world for tuning in we have a an Instagram uh, district Instagram page. We also have a Facebook page and a website and a podcast, of course. Um, if you have a show idea or a photo op or an event you'd like us to cover, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections, and we'll catch you in two weeks. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.